Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today we're going to be covering how to add loot tables to regular Minecraft chests. Uh, we need to create a loot table first. Uh, we can use either vanilla loot tables or the or custom ones through M Creator. I'll cover both methods uh, in today's video. So the first top part is the registry. This is basically the path where the loot table is located. Uh, this is the most important part as well as the namespace for when you're actually working on the actual um, setting it up and stuff. So mod basically means your own mods and namespace. Minecraft is Minecraft's. And then we have different configuration. This basically changes a little bit how the path up at the top works. Uh, you can set a custom path or you can use um, the built-in features. Sometimes it's easier to type the re the path the, the way that you need to. So you can set it up however you want. Though some things might have certain um, functions on how they actually render. So keep that in mind. So, for example, the path I have, when you go into the Minecraft jar, you'll have be presented with a couple folders. One's called Data, Minecraft, and then there is Loot Tables, which are where Minecraft stores all their loot tables. And then inside all those paths there, those are basically where the registry are. So, for example, uh, we can see under this one, we have all these different loot tables, and we can definitely confirm that they're loot tables by looking at the configuration. So uh, that's basically where they're stored in Minecraft. You have to go ahead and extract it yourself. Uh, it's illegal to provide these files. So um, I'll leave a tutorial on how to do that for yourself and you can uh, obtain the two folders that I showed before for the Minecraft thing. I have already done a tutorial on that. So basically uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the a loot table from one of these things but I want to make sure that we are in the right path and we have a different we have a whole bunch of different folders for um, where the loot tables are located so gameplay uh, entities blocks and I believe chests is another one so all those different ones have uh, things like every block has its own loot table so basically it has its own drop properties uh, through loot tables. All right, so that's basically it uh, for the loot table part. Let's uh, actually get into doing this. So I'm going to set it to mod. This is important for uh, making my own loot table. I'm going to call it uh, chest slash loot. Make sure that like you can obviously change it between the two. So if it's a block, then you would set blocks. If it's a chest, then you would set chest. Uh, I don't think the namespace matters too much for chests if you're using a custom loot table, to tell you the truth, but the path does need to be properly set up. So, for example, loot tables, and then we have um, basically the generic. So I'm going to set chest, and then it's going to set up the loot table automatically for me. Now, for the loot table registry, we're going to need to actually set that up but we'll also set the blocks for what we want to go into this loot table so we can actually test something so i'm going to use a uh, golden block i'm going to make this uh be anywhere between zero and one for rarity and then one to nine for a golden ignit so once i've done that i will i'll basically save the loot table and then we'll be able to use the path in uh basically a command format that we'll be able to get from mcstacker.net. So I'll cover that part in just a little bit. Uh, the important part though is making sure that you have everything set up the way that you want. Uh, make sure that you're obviously on MC Stacker. This is by far the easiest way to actually do it. I've used it multiple times for this. So we're going to use the data merge block method first and then we'll go into the give command method. Uh, there's basically those are the two common methods that I've discovered and have heard about through other people. Uh, so if we select the merge of block uh, one, then we can it'll be all automatically set up for chest. If not, then you'll have to filter for a chest. And then as you can see, it says loot table, and we can put our registry in here as well as our namespace. So this is our registry. This is where our loot table will be stored. We're going to need that to be right here but we're also going to need our namespace uh, before that with a colon so we can go into our workspace properties 
And then under the mod ID slash namespace, that's where we're going to put that. Just make sure to put the two dots or the colon uh, between your registry, your path, and your namespace. And then it should be set up. So you should have something like this when you're set up. It might vary depending on the Minecraft version, but it basically do the same thing. All right, so going into the game, I'm just going to grab a quick chest. And then we're going to test uh, how to set the property using relative coordinates. Obviously you can't really do that because the block is uh, underneath and it's testing for the block below. So a logical person would think, okay, maybe if I put a block, um, like, like I said, uh, it's like a, a pixel or so below the actual height level. So it's going to be testing in the block and you would think, okay, yeah, I can just place a block on top and set the coordinates to something like 0 0.5 or something like that. Well, it won't accept that specific parameter. It doesn't do a decimal point, so you can't really uh, change how that works. So the other option would be, okay, maybe I can just stand on the top and then set negative uh, two or something like that. No, it won't work either. So the only way to actually use this method is to use specific coordinates. Uh, so you'll have to use the autofill, which is the tab icon by default. So you just basically fill the autofill the location and then it will say the block has been modified. We can open it and we'll get whatever we want from it. So that will be our loot table itself. You can do this with Minecraft uh, loot tables as well. I'll cover that at the end of the tutorial. But uh, basically that's the first method. The second method is through the give command. Uh, we'll select the give command and then we need to go down to filter and set chest. And then we're gonna be presented with the loot table itself. So we can paste that same registry in that we got and then we can copy the, the command for this. It should look something similar to this unless the game has changed. And then we can basically give ourselves a block um, with the loot table. So if we place it down, uh, by default, you can't actually see if it get, has any MBT data. Uh, if you do F3H, uh, that will enable tooltips and then you can kind of see that it has a MBT where this one doesn't. So we can actually right click on it and you can see that there is the loot table uh, generating in that particular one. We can place another one down. It'll be completely different and we'll do it one more time. So that's basically how it works. Um, pretty simple stuff. Uh, we can do this with vanilla ones as well. So we'll do that in just a second. So if you wanted to do the slash give command or the slash data command, those are the by far the easiest methods to do that with. Um, other, you could do it through command blocks too, but you don't really need to do that if you can just run the command. So outside of that, uh, we can also do some other things like uh, give ourselves uh, some properties for the loot table. Uh, so for example, we can set chest and then Minecraft for the namespace. This will allow us to tap into their loot tables and then we'll do something like block or pardon me, chest and then slash. That will be the folder that we're looking into. And then let's get a name from the Minecraft chess one. So I think we'll go with something from the village and we'll use the file name uh, village butcher. So it's under the village folder. So we're going to need to um, call it chests because that's the one that it's called. And then we're gonna paste in the file, what we wanna select. And then we need to select village and then put another slash behind it that will put it in that particular folder. So it will target the right file. So again, we can open it and that's what the loot table basically generates as. So we can see that it's generating the butcher's uh, loot table for that particular village thing. So you can get all the different loot tables from the vanilla game. I will cover how to do um, procedural based loot tables as it is kind of still required for specific um, specific loot tables but at the moment that's all the time that i have for today if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out